Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to look to go to 6-0 and in his professional career come up here April the 22nd and in Chattanooga, Tennessee at Aries Fight Series. Robbie, uh, appreciate the time. You know, I was, uh, you know, I was kind of, you know, looking at some of the things and your nickname's Razor. I mean, was there ever a point the nickname was, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just going in there to be in there for a couple of seconds and walking out the door? You know, that, that, that would be a good one. You know, Scott, you know, I, in my first couple of pro fights, I, I've had a lot of luck in there. So for people who do not know 16 seconds, 13 seconds, 37 seconds, 40 seconds. Now, the last time you, you, you got some uh, cage experience, I guess they say, you know, and, and that's kind of like, it's this interesting thing, you know, because I, I think that there's like, you know, obviously you're, you're not paid by the minute you're paid to get in there and get out. But then, you know, you have some fighters will say, you know what, like, and, and obviously you've been doing this for some time. I mean, with your amateur and pro career, they'll say, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get some cage, you know, some cage time in and, you know, and having that feeling like, do you look at your last fight as like the example of like, okay, I kind of needed that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's the fights that you go in there and, you know, you have to kind of, uh, put everything together that you feel the most accomplished after you know uh, my last fight against Jacob Kilburn he was a uh, UFC vet and uh, he had just recently got cut from the UFC so I knew that he was going to be a good opponent and I got to get in there and uh, you know work my striking and uh, my wrestling and my jiu-jitsu all in one fight so I felt real good getting some uh, experience in there that I was missing in my earlier uh, professional fights. See, so Tapology is my go-to site when I'm, you know, doing some prep for interviews. And uh, so I'm on your Tapology page and I'm like, God damn it. I am feeling goddamn old because you were <laughs> born two months after I graduated high school. I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm getting old. But then the other thing that stuck out to me is you're only 22 years old. But when you go to kind of this martial arts start for you. You were taking exhibition matchups back in 2015. We can do the math and figure out how old you were at that point. So, like, when when does martial arts become part of your life? Yeah. So, both my mom and dad are lifelong martial artists. Uh, my mom, she was a professional kickboxer back in the 80s, and my dad, I tell everybody he was doing jujitsu before jujitsu was even cool. Um, he, you know, he started out teaching in the basement of uh, our house and had students then back in like 1998. And uh, so. When I was born, I kind of grew up in a martial arts gym. My parents opened up a gym here called Ring Combat Sports back whenever I was, before I was born. Mm -hmm. So I remember, you know, growing up at the gym. And then, you know, I, at first I started out doing karate. Didn't really have the love uh, for karate that I do MMA. But when I turned eight years old, I did jujitsu. And that's, I was like, that's what I want to do. And then I started putting two and two together. MMA came along, and I've been doing MMA since I was about 10 years old. And uh, it took off from there. I had my first uh, unofficial expedition MMA mm -hmm. fight at 15. And then I haven't stopped since then. I'm 22 now. So I've been at it for a little while. Yeah, I mean, the way I look at that of talking about your story, I, I think it's like this, this new breed of mixed martial artists of, you know, someone that's around your age, maybe a little bit older where, you know, back of, you know, say someone who's competing right now, that's in their, you know, say their thirties, you know, they grew up in one discipline, you know, wrestling, obviously here in, in the United States has always been that big discipline. Like, do you kind of view it of like, do you view yourself kind of as that new breed of fighter where it's just not one discipline. It was at a young age, you were just getting all the disciplines in at once. Oh, 100%. Uh, it was just like at high school, you know, we had a wrestling team here. Where I'm from, the wrestling team at the high school wasn't that good, so I never did wrestle in high school. Mm -hmm. But yet I was wrestling state champions at the MMA gym from the time, you know, I was 13 and 14 years old. So I was putting it all together for MMA at that young age. It wasn't just straight jujitsu or it wasn't just straight boxing or kickboxing. Uh, I spent all my time crafting that full MMA game with all of it. So the nickname Razor, who gave it to you? Uh, it was one of my coaches, Bill Watkins. He uh, told me uh, that I was looking sharp as a razor, and then he said, uh, Razor Robbie sticks. So I've just ran with it. 
Is was it a name that uh, nickname that you liked right from the start? Oh yeah, I thought that Razor Robbie Ring uh, felt good to say, <laughs> and you know it, it was kind of easy to market. You know, Razor Robbie Ring, so I I stuck with it. I love it. You know, you mentioned about obviously your last win came up against a, a UFC vet, and you know mentioned the fact of you know prior to that it been nothing but quick victories. Like a, as you you think about your pro run, like how do you describe it? Um, uh, the way that I would describe it is um, on a mission, and uh, I've been working really hard at this for a long time, and my main goal is to make it to the UFC. Um, I got to go in there and take care of business on the regional scene to get uh, to get noticed, and I can't go in there and get decision after decision because no, that's just like any other fighter out there. I, I'm going in there for a finish and to prove a, a point that uh, I, I belong uh, at a, another the higher level of MMA fighting. Anyone who's listened to my show for a long time, they know one of the things of when I kind of hear that, one thing I kind of point to is like, you know, there's this this line inside of a fight of, you know, being aggressive, but not kind of toting that over aggressive line where, you know, may, maybe you you're trying to finish a fight, but also man, you could be leaving yourself open to something Yeah, like how, how do you balance that in, in terms of knowing or is it just an instinct for you? Yeah, you you definitely have to be careful. You can't go out there like it's a street fight. You'll get you'll get caught. Uh, you know uh, how I how I explain it is it's it's controlled. You got to be controlled in there, and you got to know when to flip that switch. Um, you know, and that comes from training. We we train hard at Ring Combat Sports in my hometown of Withville, Virginia. And, you know, that's where you start to pick up those instincts like you were mm-hmm. talking about and knowing, and knowing when to pull that trigger in the cage. What do you love most about the fight game? Ah, what is there not to love about it? I, I think that it's the thrill for me. Um, there's, there's no other adrenaline rush like there is being locked in that cage and in front of a thousand people cheering you on. And, you know, the family that I've... Uh, made uh, through my martial arts career you know i'm closer to my teammates than i am most of my real family so those are the two things that i I really love most about fighting and it's been real good to me it's 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 truly a lifestyle to me i don't know what i would do without mma fighting in in terms of this upcoming matchup here against Corey at aries fight series as you you think about him as an opponent what, what, what are some of the challenges you see with this matchup yeah, he's uh, he's a lot older than me for one, and he's got more professional fights than me. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he seems from his tape that I've watched, he, he's very athletic, um, real short, stocky, muscled up guy, um, pretty good wrestler. I just think that uh, I'm better in every aspect of MMA fighting, striking, grappling, wrestling, and uh, I don't think that he's going to be able to handle the pace that I'm going to bring uh, on fight night. In terms of, of being this overall mixed martial artist, uh, of you know, you just mentioned there talking about, hey, I can do this, 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 this. Do you kind of look at that as one of your biggest advantages in a fight of like, man, I can faint so many different things to help set up what I'm truly trying to set up? Yes, and it's uh, and it's a good thing to have to be well rounded, especially now that MMA is evolving so much. Is if I go in there and I'm looking to strike. And the guy surprises me and, you know, starts tagging me on the feet. I always know that I'm capable of taking the fight down to the ground and and controlling the fight there or pushing the fight up against the fence and landing some damage there in the clinch. Um, It's just it kind of gives you that sense of relief knowing that no matter where the fight goes, I can take it to where I I want it to go and find a way to win. Do a little true false here. Is it true? Darce chokes your favorite submission? Oh yeah. Uh, well, you know, any kind of choke. I like, I like choking people. Um, it, it's just something that, uh, it, it's been, it's been good for me to use in there because everybody's neck works the same. You cut off the carotid arteries, they either tap or they go to sleep. And, and for people who don't know, the reason I mentioned Darce choke is because your, your two submission wins here have, have come by Darce. Like I, I remember Brennan Ward, the, the Bellator fighter, this was years ago. And, and I said, Hey, would you prefer to, to knock out or, or submit your opponent? And, and he 
it, this has always stuck with me. He goes, oh, someone was talking shit about you. What would you want to do? I go, okay, good point. Uh, so for yeah. you, is there is there a preference or is it more of just having that mentality of I have to take what is given to me? Yeah, definitely take what's given to me. Um, you know, a flashy knockout. I've had those before as an amateur and, you know, it's good. It's cool for a video, but at the same time, getting your hand raised is the ultimate is the ultimate goal. Um, and whether that comes by submission, a TKO, them quitting on the stool, a win is a win in, in my eyes. Of course, I want it to look impressive, but in my opinion, getting the finish is the most important thing to me. Was there ever a moment, what maybe was back in your amateur career, where you realized, like, I just got to take what's there, as opposed to, like, you know, you go into a fight with the mentality of, like, oh, it's going to go down like this. And mm-hmm. was there ever that kind of that moment for you? Yeah, and this is actually uh, my last couple of amateur fights. I, I don't know what was going on, but I was kind of having – I was starting to coast a little bit in my fights. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look back at my amateur career, my last few fights were decisions. Yeah. And uh, I had the COVID hit, and, you know, during COVID, I was thinking a lot about, like, I can't keep getting these decisions like this. Mm-hmm. And so then I started realizing, you know, you got to take some, you got to take the opportunities that come to you. If there's a choke open, you got to take it. You can't just settle with being on top, you know, peppering the guy with ground and pound. So that it kind of, it took that me going to decisions, my last few amateur fights to start to realize what I had to do to get a finish. And, um, uh, since then, uh, I've not had any decisions. So I think that uh, something's clicked to me. I mean, like, obviously that was a interesting time for all of us in our world with, with the pandemic and everything that went down, especially for fighters. Cause there just wasn't opportunities to compete. Like, it, do you, I mean, I mean, I hate to say you, you look at the positives, but do you look at that positive of like, because I was unable to take fights, it allowed me to kind of take a deeper dive into, okay, here's what I'm doing. Well, here's what maybe you thought you weren't doing well and, and find that middle ground of how you, you mix everything together. Yes. And uh, I, I did an interview before um, and I told the guy that COVID was actually, you know, it was a horrible time. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I've known people that's passed away with COVID and it was a horrible time for all yeah. of us. Um, but for me, it gave me some time to sit there and get my mind right. Uh, during COVID, I was 19 years old, and I was a little immature as a martial artist. And a lot of it was it was mentally. Mm-hmm. I, I struggled a lot with having confidence in my abilities. Like I, everybody would tell me, you know, Robbie, you're good. You really could make something out of yourself. But I didn't believe that and um COVID really helped me get my mind right to know that you know I was good I can go out there and compete with these guys and and do well and I can take this as far as I want to take it so it really was a good thing for me because it allowed me to get my mind right and then whenever I started training again and the gym opened back up it was I was a different completely different fighter after COVID one of the things that Ed was mentioning to me was, uh, you know, some of your hobbies. And, and one of the things was about, uh, you like to hunt and fish. So if it's a, you know, it, it's a, a, a Saturday, Sunday, obviously not during, uh, you know, as you're a week or two away from a fight, but like we can go out and enjoy a, you know, a Friday or Saturday, you know, maybe you're out with the family, maybe you're hanging out with the boys and you're going to go fishing or hunting. Like, is there a, like, let's say you're going fishing. Like, is there a certain fish? Like you say, I, I, this is what I'm hunting for today. Yeah, so uh, my uncle, he, he's actually a professional bass fisherman, and uh, he, he's won a, a bunch of tournaments, you know, at Lake Norman in Charlotte, North Carolina, and so he'll take me out on the boat, and we'll, we'll go bass fishing, and then uh, we also catch a fish called a, a crappie, and we will eat the fire out of those things. We have a fish fry at my granny's house, and uh, we, we will eat fish, and then hunting, we always hunt for whitetail, deer, and turkeys. So whenever I'm not in fight camp, I, I really like just being outside doing uh, outdoorsman stuff. It, it keeps my mind. It kind of, it, right in that moment, it just lets you think about, you know, finding a deer and killing the deer or catching a fish. And it kind of relaxes the mind a little bit. 
it, I, fighters talk about that all the time of trying to find something that gets your mind off. Like I'm sure, you know, Corey Delaney is a name that you're thinking about, you know, pretty much every hour of the day you're up on, on a day and day basis. But is, is that for you of you, you've just, you, you ha, you know, you have to kind of find those things that just allow the brain to rest a little bit. Yes, for sure. And then a lot of the times it's like the week after my fight, like after this fight, I plan on going Turkey hunting the weekend after. And, uh, cause fighting MMA fighting is very, very, very stressful on the mind. I mean, you, you, you drive yourself crazy. I wake up every single day thinking about fighting and it's all day. I drive my fiance absolutely crazy because I'm making her watch film of Corey Delaney and say, what do you think? What do you think? You know? And so it's good. To, it's good to have some things like that to keep your mind off of it. And, uh, you know, just to relax a little bit. It, 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 are you at the point that you're tired of watching his film? Oh yeah, I'm one of these guys. If somebody, if a fighter tells you they aren't watching a uh, film on their opponent, they're lying. Because I'm telling you, I, I watch Corey Delaney. Don't know, but I'm going to sleep every single night watching his film and critiquing, critiquing him, uh, looking for my openings. I I pretend that I'm in there with him and what mm-hmm. I'm going to do to him. So yeah, I I'm I'm about done watching Corey Delaney's fights because uh, I've watched him so much. But is it also the same that you're going back and watching your own fights and, and having that, that self analyzation of, okay, this is what Corey's watching. This mm-hmm. is what like you know, like, you know, I come from a football world and, and we, we constantly live in that self evaluation of, okay, what are the tendencies, you know, no matter what position you play, you know, like if we're, you know, choosing an MMA example of, you know, Hey, does, do you constantly throw, a certain combination if you switch stances like is that a big part of what you do as well oh yeah so after every fight um when i watch back my film i try to put myself in the mindset of i'm my opponent Mm -hmm. watching my film critiquing myself and you know i'm i'm really my biggest critic i can find those 13 second uh, fights and find something that I did wrong in those. And, uh, and I think that's why I constantly improve from mm-hmm. fight to fight is because I'm sitting there and even if it's something minor, uh, that I, I, my left hand was just a little bit too low or my footwork was just a little off. Yeah. I want to critique that and go into the gym and, and, and fix that problem before the next fight. So who's the second biggest critic? Oh, my dad, my coach. Uh, my, my dad's my head coach and I'll tell you, shoo we, he's, he's old school. Uh, our gym is old school. Uh, he's, it, it would remind you of some of like the old pride days of fighting, uh, you know, Brazilian top team, those gyms like that. It's the same stuff that they were doing that we're doing every day. And I think that's what makes tough, hard nosed fighters. Yeah, it's uh, there's there's still some of those gyms out there. I think people may not realize that even some of those b- bigger gyms, uh, there, there's still some of that hardcore, yeah. old school mentality. Yes, sir. Uh, final thing for for people who are just getting a chance to get to know you, you know, and 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 they're starting to follow your career. What would you want them to know about you? You know, I I, I think that the the biggest thing that I want people to know about me is you know I'm I'm a hard worker and. Uh, I've dedicated my life to the sport of mixed martial arts, and uh, I, I'm I'm very humble. Uh, I don't think that I'm better than anybody. I just know that with my work ethic, I can beat anybody in in the cage. And uh, I'm just waiting for my time. I'm young, and uh, I, I've I've worked hard to get to the spot that I am uh, today. So I don't think that there's really anything stopping me from making it to the UFC and doing something while I'm there and uh, just keep an eye out on me because hopefully, you know, within the next year or two, I'll be there and uh, fighting on the big stage. And we look forward to seeing that when that does happen here, Robbie, I appreciate you coming on the show. Of course, uh, let me know they can find on social media and anything else you want to mention, man. Yeah. So, um, you can follow me on social media on Instagram at Razor Rob MMA, and you can follow me on Facebook at Razor Robbie Ring. Um, just uh, I want to give a big shout out to my team, my parents at uh, Ring Combat Sports, and um, I want to give a shout out to my my agency Iridium Sports for you know hooking me up with this interview. 
And uh, y'all come uh, if if you can watch. If you can't make it out to Chattanooga, Tennessee, April twenty second to watch me fight. Uh, Spectation Sports is streaming the event. You can go to RobbieRing.com and it'll take you right to that link to buy the pay-per-view to watch me. And uh, last thing, uh, I want to give all the credit to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's uh, He's been real good to me and uh, he's blessed me with a lot of uh, the talent. And uh, I just have to keep working hard and he's going to bless me with uh, much more. So, And thank you for having me on the show.